every chair in a chair? Every chair in a chair. Yes, since game time. Not sequential. It's <laughs> it's one or the other. Is this the appetizer, the main course, well, or the dessert? For somebody of your appetite, yes. I thought they did a nice, nice job on this. Um, you walk in the front door and it's to the left down the hallway. You'll see my camera. Yeah, yeah. Just all the way on the left. I'll see you in a second. How are you? All right. So they'll get the Can you get as well as 25,000 times 12? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Hey, Good. Good to see you. Have you met Andrew? I have not. Hi, Andrew. Right. Tell for us. Hi, Andrew. Nice to meet you. Yes, I want to tell you. He's going to be doing the uh, committee this year. Or, so, and I'm, I'm here to help him out. To help him out. Help him learn our rules. Thanks for coming. Uh, if you'd like to hang your coat up, find everyone. There's a coat rack. Uh, uh, down the hall. Thank you. 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 It's kind of press on most of my other issues. How's your holidays? Good. good. Yeah, all drink. It's got them all for Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's yeah. not all of them for Christmas. Yeah. They go together with them all. Yeah. It's hard. Every other year. Right? Yeah. Now, uh, is that how it all starts? Of course, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, 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 you know, they come in, they bed down, they're all in the back of the room. 
used to the press scrums at the Capitol, though, if, if you could ask that. Oh, sure. Well, yeah. I just want to get in there. Yeah, I mean, it seems like you guys are getting very far. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? Hey, long time no see. Good to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you too. How about this? A dinner committee meeting where you all get to come in and sit down and watch, or stand and watch, I guess. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can beat up on us, right? <laughs> Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm used to. I don't mind the media. If we didn't want a, a job where the media is involved, we wouldn't be here. I'd be back at home sitting on my couch watching TV. <laughs> well, even then, I might be stopping you on the street for a man on the street here. <laughs> it's all right. I'm all right with that. You don't beat up on me. I don't beat up on you. It's, it's <laughs> and if we do beat up on you, then you end it's up usually deserved half the time. I'd have to say, to tell you the truth. If someone's gonna beat up on us. We usually have done something where we warrant it. Uh -huh. And if you can't speak to, about it or to it, then it warrants it even more. Yeah. yeah. You know, even like this whole transparency. Deal. It's no secret. Shot at this board here while we're waiting. I'm good, man. You said any more lives in the cabin? Okay. No, I don't want to be on the first of your lives. That's correct. My bad. No, I haven't had to do that. Thank God for that. I do have a bill, though, that could save lives. CPR for high school students. That's where I learned it. Was just like, is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what we had in my high school. So, so, this, so this would be requiring. Tell you what, you want to learn CPR? Come on. Uh, come on. I'm going to call a, a subcommittee meeting of the telecommunications uh, committee to order. Uh, it does not look like we have a quorum, so we have to, by our rules, we have to open up into a subcommittee. Uh, so we'll do that. 
Uh, and what we'll do to start, this is just an informational meeting. There's, there's no uh, bills presented tonight uh, or anything like that, but it is an informational meeting and an organizational meeting. Uh, so what we'll do, uh, we have some people from the industry, we have committee members, and we have some press. And so uh, I'll tell you what, we'll just go around the room and, and do an introduction all the way around uh, and go from there. Uh, so I'm Bart Corman. Uh, I'm the chairman of the New House Telecommunications Committee. Um, I represent the 42nd District, uh, which is uh, Montgomery, uh, most of Warren, and part of St. Charles County. Um, I've been uh, a member of the House. This is my fifth year, and I've sat on the Utilities Committee for four years prior to, um, and with the new committee structure, uh, now, now chairman of the Telecommunications Committee. And I'll turn it over. We'll go around this way and let uh, our vice chair introduce himself. Why not? Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. As you can see now, it is just an informational, well, always was, really, but uh, has become a little bit less than we hope to be here, and I know why. It's no secret. But um, I, I'm Ron Hicks, representative from St. Charles County. I will be vice chairing this committee and hopefully be able to put a little bit more insight in here with uh, Mr. Corman here, representative. And uh, we thank you for your time. We thank for everything you do for us. I know a lot of things do happen outside of the offices and we do get a lot of information from you that way so I look forward to it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for the invite. We also like to welcome the press this evening. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, I'm Eli with the New York Times and the Joplin Globe. Here for fun. I'm Cameron. I'm with Progress Missouri. Garrett Berquist, KRCG 13. Chris Matthews with Missouri Digital News. Katie Hines with CamelX. Uh, Jared Taylor, uh, represent the 139th District, uh, western half of Christian County. Uh, Nixa, Highlandville, uh, Spokane, Clever. My name is Andrew Wren. I'm a research analyst at uh, Missouri House of Representatives. I'll be the research analyst for this committee. Um, prior to this, I was an attorney for a couple of years in St. Louis, uh, but I've moved on to bigger and better things. So, here I am tonight. Mark Webb, Assistant Director of House Research. I'm helping Andrew learn the ropes. Uh, Bill Gamble representing the Missouri Small Telephone Company Group, uh, serving uh, rural areas and uh, low density population areas across the state. A little, little south of uh, 40, uh, 40 of our companies are providing that service. Good evening, I'm Rick Telhorst. I'm the president of the Missouri Telecommunications Industry Association. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Good evening, I'm Warren Love. I am a my second term as state representative from District 125. I serve uh, all of Hickory, all of St. Clair, portion of Cedar County, and portions of Hickory County. Uh, we call it the Truman Lake, Omnitar Lake area. I have three counties out of the state that do not have enhanced 911. Uh, I had a meeting with a group of uh, firefighters and first responders Saturday night. And they're having trouble with their analog narrow band, and I'm just anxious and looking forward to seeing what telecommunications can do for my district. I am uh, Craig Andrew. I handle government affairs for AT&T here in Missouri. I'm Doug Galloway with CenturyLink, and I handle government affairs for CenturyLink in Missouri and Kansas. I'm Trip England, uh, along with Bill Gamble, represents small rural telephone companies in the state of Missouri. Great. So why don't everybody have a seat? We are hosting uh, dinner this evening, and what I thought we would do, the chairman uh, suggested that if you'd like to order dinner, there's a menu in front of you, if you'd like to order that, and then after they take our order, uh, 
I've got a brief presentation I'd like to make to the committee members and uh, perhaps we do. So it's, it's called Take Shape for Life, and she became a health coach for me. Well, I thought this is Steak and Shape for Life. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is my, like that is my, no. that is my kind of health plan. <laughs> no, so she just started cooking better foods and eating better. Uh, we have a son who's had some health issues. And so she changed his diet went to a gluten free kitchen. Oh, uh, All this stuff for him, and in turn started cooking better foods. And we have lost weight. Oh, we tried that It's terrible. I can't do it. I tried it. I couldn't do it. And it's almost like he has to become a vegetarian or something. Uh, I mean, it was really weird. It was hard to do. My wife is the one that, you know, with me being up here and dealing with, you know, my work. She, she, I mean, she's a trooper. I mean, she stuck to it. She got him healthy. And now, I mean, he had to it was only kind of a month afterwards, he was no longer taking ADH, do medicine, no longer taking asthma medications. His, his schoolwork went through the roof again. I mean, just all from a natural thing that she did. And I mean, he's still, now he can eat anything he wants. He only had to do it for like six months. And now he can eat anything he wants. He's back to it. We had to slowly introduce curries and, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it's nice to have your normal child back. You know, not someone who you're just trying to, you know, not go to your wit's end, but it's a hyper. It was a blessing. It was, it was definitely a blessing to see us change. And then at the same time, she got us all healthy. Right. <laughs> He's now no longer gluten free. We've yeah. introduced it slowly back in. And they said that's all it takes is a reset on his body. And it did do a reset because we still have not had to have him on the medication. <laughs> 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 okay. I guess if it ever happened again, or he got out of line, you know, or off kilter with this. I guess hell things, we would try it again. How long were we on that? I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, he did eight months. I, I love it. It was a great environment. I mean, I'm going to say, you guys have to see it. There's a lot more to be here than I think. Yeah. Yeah. Does it work? There you go. Um, you know, I think it's important with the, with the new committee structure, new committee, new committee members, uh, that uh, we learn about the telecommunications industry, uh, and so some of the history, some of the directions can go, and it's changed a lot over the years uh, since, since Mr. Bell has been at the telephone. Uh, so um, I'm going to have Rick, uh, with the association, give a presentation so we can learn a little bit about the industry. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before the subcommittee and the um, the staff as well tonight. I certainly appreciate that uh, opportunity. As Chairman Corman said, this is a great opportunity because this is really, as you all know, 
this is a new structure within the house. Uh, it, it was formerly a, a larger subject matter committee that a lot of different types of utility related bills reported to. Those bills would be reported to the rules committee and then out to the floor. As you know, the house has adopted a new uh, program or a new structure this year where the subject matter committees are cut a bit narrower. We've got telecommunications, uh, utility infrastructure, energy and environment, all under the kind of the umbrella of the uh, uh, select committee on um, utilities. So it's a good opportunity to spend a few minutes with members of the committee, members of the staff, talking about um, our industry uh, and sp specifically talking about where we have, uh, how we have progressed through the years, how the legislature has uh, responded to changes in our industry with changes in Missouri statute. Now, before I start, um, I really do think it's pro I'm probably the right guy to be the historian because when I met Andrew this evening, the new house research uh, staffer, I asked Andrew when he was born and he said 1987. And I said, wow. I said, I was actually on the house research staff before you were born. <laughs> so uh, I, I had the, the opportunity to serve on the house research staff for one session in 1979. It was really a, an honor and a pleasure. And it, it really was a, a great opportunity to learn how the legislature works and, uh, and to really kind of fall in love with the legislative process. And, and those of you who are elected officials in the room, we certainly thank you uh, for your dedication and your uh, commitment to being in public office. Uh, you all know it's not easy. Uh, you're away from your families. Uh, you have long hours, long uh, long meetings every day. And this was an opportunity. Here we are at you know, 7.30 and you're still kind of at the grind, working working away, trying to learn about our, our issues. Okay. Uh, just as an aside, they will be bringing in salads while we're talking. So okay to keep while, while I thought that's not a problem. I wanted to give you um, a brief overview of our industry and then also talk about some of the legislative changes that have taken place over the last 25 or 30 years. I've got a, a briefing paper in front of you. Uh, I'll pro provide this to the committee staff so everybody who wasn't able to join us tonight can, can uh, have that as a reference tomorrow. But I, I think it's important as a starting point to realize how important the modern telecommunications industry is to the economy of our state. It really is, and I say this a lot, and it's really, I think, very true, the entire Missouri's 21st century economy is carried by the telecommunications network. Every day, massive amounts of video, voice, broadband, uh, apps, move across the network, all facilitating not only our personal lives as Missourians, but also our business enterprises, our hospitals, our schools. It all keeps our economy humming. Uh, and sometimes, uh, since we, we do a really good job delivering that network every day, sometimes it's, it's easy to forget that kind of underlying uh, infrastructure that's there that makes it all possible. So uh, I'm actually very proud to say what a reliable uh, system we run and what a great, I think, what a great contribution we make to the economy of the state. There are about, um, and, and if I get into some acronyms or some things that sound a little fuzzy, please stop me and ask for clarification because it's easy to to get into uh, buzzwords and jargon and not, not really get focused on the message. But at first I wanted to talk about the uh, telecommunications companies that we probably all remember as kids being the local telephone company. When we think about uh, the telephone system, the one the system we grew up with is the one we really think about when we think about telephone communication. There are about 40 what are called incumbent carriers in the state of Missouri. They're called incumbent because they were in existence uh, as local telecommunications providers before the 1996 Federal Telecom Act that opened up telecommunications, uh, local telecommunications markets and long distance markets to competition from other types of carriers. They include companies like AT&T, uh, CenturyLink, Windstream, 
they're not here this evening, but Windstream would be a, a very large um, ILEC, a, an incumbent company. Also includes, as Mr. Campbell mentioned, about three dozen smaller community-based telecommunications companies that may serve just a, a couple of counties, uh, a few cities. Uh, they can often be um, uh, owned by uh, family businesses. There, a lot of them are family owned. Some of them are now in their third, perhaps fourth generation of service. Uh, they also can be uh, organized as small commercial companies as well. In addition to that, there are a number of, of telecommunications companies around the state that are organized cooperative, cooperatively. In other words, they are, they are owned by their members. And you're probably familiar, especially if you're in a rural area, you're probably familiar with electric co-ops. <coughs> telephone co-ops are a very similar type of organization, only organized to provide telephone service. Whether these companies are large or small, whether they're rural or whether they're in, in the metro areas, they all face the exact same challenges and the exact same uh, uh, goals, the exact same uh, <coughs> concerns that, uh, that they all have in that they're faced by incredibly uh, rapidly changing competitive forces in the marketplace, uh, extreme changes, almost daily changes, in technology, and they're forced to uh, compete to uh, meet their customers' uh, expectations and to stay abreast of, of uh, what it takes to, uh, to bring service to their market. Now, it's easy, I think, sometimes, especially when we pick up a wireless telephone, a mobile telephone, and say, well, there's nothing to this. You know, this thing works wonderfully. It's seamlessly. It's, you know, you don't, what do you need to, to create this kind of connectivity? It's easy to forget that big network that exists behind all that. And it's, it's easy because uh, our, our telecommunications system does work so seamlessly. But carriers, whether they're a wireline carrier or a wireless carrier, have to invest every year in their network, uh, increasing the deployment of new technology, uh, fiber optic cable in their systems. For a wireless carrier, they have to invest in, in uh, more uh, technology antennas on their, on their towers, invest in more towers around the state. So it's an extremely capital intensive uh, operation and it's, it's one that uh, we have to focus on daily to keep that, that, uh, that network operating as it should. So that's kind of a snapshot, if you will, of the industry. What I'd like to talk about next is how the Missouri Legislature and Congress has responded to the, the drivers in our industry, if you will, over the last 30 years and made adjustments in uh, both state law and in state regulation to respond to, to two, the two drivers that are in our industry, rapid changes in technology and rapid changes in customer expectations. So let me take you back about, about 30 years ago. And I guess the big picture item that I, that, that I want you to really grasp, and I, and I hope we don't get lost in the, in the details of things, but the big picture item to really grasp is that both in Congress and in the Missouri legislature, lawmakers have responded to this change from a kind of a monopoly environment in voice uh, where, where it was a very static market and, and with uh, limited options to a very rapidly uh, growing uh, competitive market with a lot of options for, for customers and a lot of new players in the market uh, that want to come in and, and provide services. If you go back to 1984, a lot of you may remember the, the breakup of the Bell system. That was the, the divestiture of the Bell system was really the first opening to uh, creating a competitive marketplace in long distance. That was in 1984 on a national basis. In 1987, here in Missouri, the legislature responded and recognized uh, of the competitive nature of long distance and passed legislation that uh, opened up the market for long distance and established a method where long distance